Good evening. It is Wednesday, March 29th, and I'm doing a drive home from my gym, uh, FSD Beta 11.3.3. Um, I've done some St. Paul driving with 11.3.3 so far, but not from this exact route. Uh, there's really just one problem area that remains on this route for me with with Beta, especially in St. Paul, and that's really this first left turn we have coming up in about three quarters of a mile here. Um, for whatever reason, um, the car, when it makes the left turn, again, we're stopping in the middle of the intersection there. I really don't like that behavior. So, so you can see here, it's stopping quite early there. I've noticed behavior like this more and more with the more drives I do with 11.3.3, and it, that behavior just wasn't there in 11.3.1, 11.3.2. So Whatever changes Tesla made in this latest, latest release before it kind of went out to some more folks, I think overall is a step backwards. Hopefully they can kind of fix these issues before 1134. Um, because again, like just the random stopping at certain, it, it shouldn't be doing that. So not sure again why, what it saw. I'll have to go back and look at the visuals when I watch the video later, but. And just the lake, the like the lane placement, you know, we we shouldn't be hanging out on these these this right lane. Honestly, I would much prefer the car to get up over to the left, much like it does on the freeway. Um, and now we have a gap to get over. We should be taking advantage of that and getting over. Yet we're staying in this right lane. I'm not quite sure why. So, you know, overall, again, I continue to see regressions with 11.33 that I just honestly didn't see before with 11.3.1, 11.3.2, so. And most commonly, it's not regressions with previous problem areas that may have been fixed, you know, in 10.69.25 or some of those builds. It's regressions in areas where there just wasn't a problem before and hasn't been a problem. And a lot of times, hasn't been a problem through any of the builds. Um, so, but overall though, I would say even with some of the regressions I've seen with 11.3.3, the highway functionality has been much better than what I'm used to with navigating autopilot. Must be a helicopter overhead, it's very loud, sorry about that. Hopefully you can still hear me. <laughs> there definitely is a helicopter, medevac helicopter flying overhead. So the car is just jamming on the brakes now. Very uncertain. It seems like it's putting itself in a lane that it can't really handle. So again, I'm going to report that. Um, we need to get over, and again, you can see we're really braking for no reason there. That guy was completely out of our lane. People are getting out of their cars in this right lane, and yet we intend to stay over here. So, again, not great behavior right off the bat here in this drive. And now we're going to get stuck behind this bus because of our lane selection. Now, we're also creeping too close to the bus, so if we wanted to go around it, we could but now we're just kind of stuck behind it. So I'm just gonna let it try to figure it out and see if it will go around the bus. And just to confirm, we are on assertive. So the car should in theory go around the bus, but now we're stuck. So again, not great behavior. So I don't think we've barely gone a mile and we've already had a lot of issues here on this drive. Um, no disengagements yet, but um, a lot of throttle interventions. I've hit the throttle now three or four times so far under a mile. All right, so now we're gonna have to get over here and under a quarter mile to the left. So we really need to get over like now before this intersection, start signaling and get over. And it looks like we're not even gonna try. It seems like this is really bizarre. All right, now we're getting over. There's a little bit of a window, but we're not taking it. It's like we're kind of handicapping ourselves here by just staying too close to this bus because it, it doesn't want to get more than like a car's length away from it. And then it just won't get over. So again, we have a space. The gap's going to go away here in a second. So let's see if it's going to get over. Yeah, it looks like we're going to completely miss the turn. Very bizarre. And then it realized it missed the turn. So I've never seen it miss that turn before. 
So now the car is, I just hit the accelerator. Let's kind of see where it goes. I'm just going to let it try to figure itself out. It's going to want to do a U-turn now up here. Amazing. So now it's, uh, I just pressed the throttle there. So I kind of want to see the nav data. You know, the nav looks good. The GPS is locked and everything. So we're not definitely not having GPS problems from what I can see. The car just just being too lazy and getting over. So pretty frustrating to be honest with you. Um, I've done this drive now with 11.3, one through you know dot three, probably 10 or 15 times over the month, and this is the first time where it's missed that turn. And that even goes back before this with the 69 builds like. It would never miss those turns. It would hang out more in the left lane. Now, the difference was a lot of times, to be fair, the car would sit in the, uh, would get in the left lane right off the bat, so I never had to worry about that second lane change. All right, it's clear. It's very choppy. I'm not hitting the throttle at all. So I did this turn the other day. At least this time, it's getting right to the left right off the bat. Yesterday, it kind of went all over the place. So... You know, the behavior on, uh, we're on, what street are we on now? We are on Wabasha. Um, much better today um, in terms of finding its spot. But again, though, the turn behavior, it's, it's, it just seems to lack all the confidence I saw. 1131, 1132. Um, very choppy on the throttle. I mean, the, the most confident turns I've ever seen have been 1131 and 1132 where it would hold a consistent throttle application throughout the entire turn. It was fantastic. I mean, for those, I know my videos, I could, I, I highlighted it quite a bit, but it was excellent behavior and really not seeing that in 11.33 so far. Good job with that fast lane change though. We did get over right off the bat, not a lot of room there. Wish we could have seen similar behavior when we were trying to turn left onto uh, that I-94 exit back downtown St. Paul, but... All right, so now we are getting up to speed on the highway here, and we will be entering I-94 uh, West. So I'm going to try something out here. I'm going to leave the car and chill. Supposedly the car will exit the passing lane and chill or, or average. I haven't seen that behavior before, but I don't think I've given it enough time here. So I'm just going to change the speed to reset it here and see if it does anything. So we have kind of some cars kind of catching up to us behind here. I'll let it go a little bit longer and then I'll probably cut it off here and move it over to the other lane. But There we go, cool. So I know I've been kind of complaining about that in Asserta that there's no ability for it to get out of the passing lane. Um, that was the first time that I've seen that, so that was really cool. I think maybe I should spend some more time too. Um, usually I like Asserta though because of the fact that like, I feel like it more matches my driving style and you know, a lot of times, even Assertive is way too hesitant and cautious, but be interested to hear what your guys' thoughts are if you've had a chance to play with the other profiles and what your thoughts are and preferences.
So it looks like to that, uh, and that would make sense, you know, being in chill, the car does get over sooner. Because usually we're not getting over to within a half mile of this turn up here, so. A little bit of braking there, I'm not sure what it's uh, gonna report that. bit of wheel movement there but again nothing like we used to get with navigating autopilot where it was all over the place we got section back there and right away the car gets out of the pass lane which is pretty cool so you know maybe I will use this profile more on the uh, city streets here and highways so again right now I'm in chill I'm slowing down here to let this person that's driving a pretty aggressive going around the outside here. Otherwise, he probably would have been in their way. So. Quite a bit of braking there as we kind of enter this curve. I have noticed that as well in 11.33. The car around turns on the highway like this were, you know, more of a bend, I guess, if you will. Um, the car is definitely going slower around those than it ever did before. And that's irrespective of the profile that we have selected. Um, I've noticed the same behavior, maybe not as pronounced as we saw it there, but more noticeable than we ever did before on assertive. All right, we were exiting I-35W North, and we'll be turning left on a County Road D up here. And I'm just gonna leave the car and chill for the rest of this drive, just to see if I notice any other differences on the city. So far, it just seems like it's a passing-related setting in terms of how aggressive the car is when it comes to speed-based lane changes and exiting the uh, passing lane. Good job comfortably slowing down there and making that left turn. No issues there. That continues to be a good turn for version 11. Okay, we're stopping for no reason here. I'm not sure what it saw. I'm guessing it had a tough time seeing that green light there, and I'm gonna report that as well. Did not press the throttle there, but um, I could see traffic potentially getting irritated if we waited any longer there. All right, this is our left turn on a Stinson here. So we're gonna have to get over. The dotted line is not visible until right about now. Good job slowing down comfortably. Now we have to go. Good job there. I was waiting for the choppy behavior on the uh, brake and throttle there, but the car did a really good job of knowing that it had space and kept it, kept the turn going. That was good. All right, and then you know, like most residential roads in the Twin Cities, if the car defaults to 30 miles per hour. I sound like a, I'm beating a dead horse here, I'm sure, but, um, and I had to just kill the nav there, by the way, because again, it was going to end it at this house here, which we're not going to, but, um, the speed limit continues to be wrong on all Twin Cities roads. So a little bit of choppy behavior there too, I'm going to report that. We had plenty of room to squeeze in between that truck and the park traffic there, so, um, spatial awareness, continue to call it out version 11, um, the car is just too conservative when it comes to comes to that right now. Um, I'm fine with that being the case in, in this in early version 11 build that's public, but 
really hope in the future they'll tune that to be a little bit more aggressive because the car's got plenty of room. A little bit of a blind corner here. Good job slowing down, but not being choppy. And then we have a very awkwardly placed stop sign up here. Good job stopping at the stop line there. It's the stop sign we've unfortunately been kind of rolling past a little bit and stopping, but considering that intersection and kind of where visibility is, I am fine with it as long as it stops within within reason there. A little hesitant as we come around this blind corner here, but again, good safe behavior. Path planning looks to be fairly confident. And then now we're gonna flip back to my home address here and this should finish us out. So, interesting. It's really losing its mind here. And this fork is another area when we came at it from the other direction uh, where FSD the other day lost its mind and kind of got really confused. It didn't result in a disengagement, but it was very close to it. It did the similar thing there where it was kind of putting the tentacle everywhere. Okay, so this is a tough, unprotected right turn. This is Johnson Street that we're turning on to. We are clear, a little choppy, but overall, not the worst turn we've seen there. So good stuff overall. And a very smooth left turn. Car does like to accelerate after we turn on to 36 here. Because again, the speed limit is wrong across the Twin Cities. So that continues to result in an intervention there. And this route will continue to evolve as the snow melts. We're, we're not too far off. Unfortunately, we have a winter storm warning for tonight and tomorrow, I think for like the next day or two. So, you know, this is gonna, the conditions will continue to evolve and I'm sure the drives will get a little better, especially with 11.34 drops, hopefully this weekend, so. But one thing is consistent and the excessive hesitation at that empty intersection there continues to be the case. So, and it's definitely because of the street to our left back there the car for whatever reason just anticipates there's always going to be traffic there that it can't see and honestly there's never traffic there in that spot but anyways that was actually a zero disengagement drive probably one of the roughest ones since 10.2 that i've seen but um you know definitely some some work in progress with 11.33 the team definitely has to Hopefully be releasing a better release here because I really hope we can go back to what we saw with 11.3.1 and 11.3.2. Um, there's a lot of room for improvement with this build, especially when it comes to path planning and lane selection. But anyways, hope you enjoyed it. Thanks for watching and I'll see you in the next one.